Alright, so uh, let's talk about feminism for a moment. Okay, okay, hold on. Listen, I told you, this is my channel, there's no theme. I'll, I'll talk about whatever I want, okay? And today we're gonna talk about feminism, okay? J just shut up. P pipe down and listen, okay? So, a question that's been bothering me for a long time is... How does feminism help men? Because I've heard a lot of feminists say this, that feminism helps both men and women, and every now and then I would stumble on an article by a feminist site about how feminism is the best thing for men, trying to get their male readers to drink this big tub of Kool-Aid, telling them that this is all for their own benefit. And eventually I decided to go ahead and google some variations of things like top 10 ways that feminism helps men or how patriarchy hurts men too, to see if maybe I was all wrong, maybe I got this completely wrong and the feminists got it right. Now, needless to say, I wasn't exactly turned. First of all, when you google any combination of the words feminism, helps, and men, for every article you find about how feminism benefits men, you'll find about three different articles by feminists about how men can help them. And the alternative, how patriarchy hurts men, uh, that isn't much better because that turns up as one of its first results, an article by the Geek Feminism Wiki, which explains that even saying this is just a derailment tactic and that although feminism is meant to help both men and women, any attempt to talk about men's issues within feminism needs to be dismissed and treated with hostility. So we're already off to a pretty bad start. In fact, the only thing that came even close to a good article about this topic was on Mike.com of all places which really shows you the high standard we're talking about here. Now, you might tell me that there are better sources for this, that I should have read a book about this, for example, but since the people writing these articles have clearly never read one in their lives, I don't see why I should hold myself to a higher standard, okay? After all, feminism helps men is an argument I hear primarily from internet feminists, so I might as well explore why they think that using articles written by other internet feminists. That makes a, a good bit of sense to me. So I've been mulling over the results of my little experiment in my head ever since and thinking about whether or not I should do a video about it. Now a few days ago I realized that I have nothing better to make a video about and that I don't really want to start my next hour long autism project yet, so I guess we'll settle for this for now. So what I did, I went through this process again. And I was thinking of maybe taking all I found and uh, creating maybe a chart, a graph, really, really digging deep into this, really showing you some visuals, analyzing it by percents. But after reading somewhere on the ballpark of 40 articles about this, I realized that aside from a few exceptions of specific examples and uh, points that haven't been raised by other articles, any article that can be considered coherent enough to take seriously, any article that didn't contain arguments like Feminism helps men by allowing them to recognize the divine feminine, which is a real argument I found on one site. Any article that made any kind of sense could easily be broken down into uh, three main points. So I'm just going to go over the three main points and see if they help men in any way. And then I'm gonna look over some of the exceptions and do the same. Sounds good? Alright, let's see. Now let me prefix all of this by saying that this video has no sources cited because I just don't care. See, this is not a skeptic channel, okay? I am not in a pissing contest with every other YouTube high school dropout who desperately needs to overcompensate for this fact by making pseudo-intellectual videos about how feminism is at fault for them being a bunch of idiots, or argue with every asshole in the comment section because they need to have the last word. If you think I'm lying about something or wrong, then go look it up yourself, okay? Which, if you do, I'm sure you will, just so you can post a selectively edited quote from an article about a study that you didn't read to make sure that I know that you think I'm wrong. Much in the same way as anyone that already thought that feminism is garbage before watching a single second of this video will pat himself on the back at the end of it and then head straight to the comment section where they can all jerk each other off. Plus, again, I'm holding myself to the same standards as the articles I was reading, and most of them had no sources. The rest of them had either dead links to sources, sources that led to other articles on feminist sites citing the same sources, and then after jumping around from site to site a few times I would always end up at a study hidden behind a paywall 
where it's made abundantly clear that every single article that sourced this study just copied the abstract verbatim because that's the only thing that's not behind a paywall and just like me didn't bother to actually pay for the entire thing. And the few that didn't force me to go on a treasure hunt to find where their info was coming from, if I clicked the actual link and read what they were talking about, it usually made me understand that they were withholding some key information that made me understand that their entire argument is virtually completely invalid. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, let, let's start with, uh, with the first argument. The first of the three main arguments that all of these articles seem to espouse. The first one is the financial slash parental argument. This is basically one thing, the effects of which have been split into multiple subcategories to beef up the number of things that are on the list, which is a recurring thing in, in, in actually all of this, in all of these articles. So the argument is basically broken down into some variation of since women entered the workplace, the GDP had gone up, which is helpful to men because they live in a better country with a higher GDP, men spend more time at home with their kids, men enjoy uh, paternity leave, and the burden on men in the military is lessened with the inclusion of women. Each of these is listed as one or sometimes several different arguments about how feminism benefits men. But a lot of these suffer from two distinct problems. The first is, was this actually the result of feminism in the first place? Because women entering the workplace during World War II had more to do with all of the men being offshore dying somewhere than it did with feminism doing anything. How much of that had to do with feminists fighting for the right to work is honestly pretty questionable. As for parental leave, none of the articles provide any links showing that it was feminists who helped men get paternal leave. But on that count, I'll, I'll let it slide because even though there's no exact instance of feminists doing this, paternal leave is instituted mostly in Scandinavian countries, which are places where feminism is pretty prevalent, so I guess the attitude may have affected this. But even assuming that all these things are true and that all of this was helped be brought about by feminism, which it very may well be, considering how many articles I found by feminists talking about how there is a need for paternal leave without actually attempting to do anything about it, that only brings us to our second problem. Why is feminism fighting for this in the first place? Was any of this the result of feminists fighting for an equality that benefits men? No, not really. Women entering the military supposedly helping lessen the load of men, a questionable proposition in of itself, was done for women's sake. And so was women entering the workplace, and while that raised the GDP, doubling the amount of workers halves the amount of money that employers are willing to pay for them. So the decline of your money's buying power has more than a little to do with women working. I'm not saying we should shackle all women to the kitchen stove, but the benefits of them working to men are negligible compared to the costs. And if you're presenting your argument as a way to convince men to be feminists in the first place, more questions aside, why would men choose a system that benefits them less than they would be benefited by a supposed patriarchy? So these aren't very good arguments. And all of this is a problem even before you ask yourself if some of these actions even benefit anyone men or women. See, the treatment of men in family courts is a great example of this. Much like with some of the other issues, you can find a lot of articles by feminist sites decrying men's mistreatment by the legal system in marital disputes. However, these are conspicuously more common in articles titled How Patriarchy Hurts Men rather than the ones about how feminism helps them because those don't require any proof of feminists actually doing anything. But the question should be asked, is this really a good thing? Because as much as I appreciate fathers' desires to spend time with their kids after a divorce or take time off from work to be with a newly born child, some psychologists question whether this is healthy for a child or not. To be raised in an artificial environment like the one we're creating where the mother is not the primary caregiver like she is in nature. Now I don't necessarily agree or disagree with this view. I just find it funny how readily the two sides of this debate change their position on the topic depending on what's convenient. Because while MRAs and anti-feminists in general blame a lot of things feminists complain about on biological imperatives, they're quick to forget biology playing a role in anything when talking about this issue. And by contrast, while feminist sites like the ones I've read like to give lip service to the idea of paternal leave and say that it's great, as soon as any gains are made in that direction, you're sure to find a deluge of articles by those self-same sites 
arguing that a child's place is with the mother when they realize that equality might not benefit them in this case. Which brings me to the point I was trying to make earlier, that most of the debate on this topic by feminists focuses less on fathers' rights to be with their children and more on how this can be used as a cudgel to force men to do housework, which is a fair complaint on the surface, but not if, as I mentioned, you want to walk back on it as soon as it requires you to share your time with the children in a way that displeases you instead of relying on a court's or an employer's disposition to favor you because of gender stereotypes. The second way that feminism helps men that is always brought up in these articles is changing gender norms. This again is separated into about a half a dozen similar arguments that are in reality all one and the same. These can include allowing men to wear pink, work feminine jobs, change their portrayal in the media, combat quote unquote toxic masculinity and allow men to cry and so on. The problem with all these arguments is pretty obvious which is science denialism. Pretty much every variation of this argument can be refuted by the fact that it's a product of biology and that on average men don't actually want to do these things. They don't do them because of societal pressures or toxic masculinity, they do it because that's what men are like. Men work different jobs because their interests are different, their media portrayal is based on their actual behavior, and toxic masculinity, quote unquote, is the product of testosterone. In fact, men cry less because they're hormonally different and because they have deeper tear ducts, which is why female to male transgenders often report that after taking hormones, they start crying a lot easier and vice versa. There is no point in me going into any more detail about this, because this argument has been had a million times and has been pretty much settled for anyone who doesn't grasp at straws like pseudoscientific theories that deny the existence of biological sex or vastly overstates the importance of nurture in this nurture versus nature argument to the point where he might as well be denying biological sex. More interesting than the essence of these arguments is their cause, since almost all of them seem to be feminists taking minor things that men do that annoy them and trying to convince them that all of their problems in the world would go away if they could just stop doing them by acting more feminine. The point of this is that feminism doesn't really help men by allowing them to do things that most of them don't actually want to do. At best, it's helping a small minority of men who feel too awkward to do them because of societal pressures while getting on the nerves of the vast majority of them while trying to strong arm them into following suit. And just a small aside here. Uh, MRAs, who I don't really like, l let me give you some advice. When you get roped into these stupid arguments with feminists and blame them for the fact that you're not allowed to learn ballet, instead of admitting that you don't actually want to do this, you're pretty much to being against feminism what Republicans are to being against Democrats when they get into the argument of who the real racist is. You're not helping your own cause. L let's be honest, most of you don't want to work at a daycare center or wear pink. So bringing up the argument of why aren't feminists fighting for my right to cry and to do god knows what, uh, you're not helping yourselves. You're idiots. I, I mean, I already know you're idiots, but you're not helping. Here, t take this little tip from me, you, you dumb pieces of shit. Is it obvious I don't actually like anyone on any side of any debate? Is, is that coming through clearly enough? I'm not sure if I've, I've made that point uh, well enough that I despise pretty much everyone and think that everyone including me is always wrong on, on everything. Okay, but let's continue. Finally, the third argument, okay? The third argument is really scraping the bottom of the barrel here, because when these sites run out of non-issues that they can subdivide into 15 categories, the next collection of things that, they, that start showing up on these lists are uh, things like black women were at the forefront of the civil rights movement, and some of the people who got civil rights were men, so feminism helps men. Or feminism helps fight for immigration reform and some illegal immigrants are men, so feminism helps men. Or for example, feminism helps change hate crime definitions so that more people can go to jail for no reason and that somehow also helps men. Or, or, or this one, okay, this one also, another real one that I saw. Uh, feminism helped destigmatize AIDS as a gay disease even though AIDS is more easily transmitted from a man to another person, so gay men are at a higher risk, 
And by destigmatizing it to the point where mentioning this is uh, is treated as bigotry, they're actually putting gay men at risk. It's it's gotten way past the point of reasonability. Uh, but helping a lot of gay men get AIDS instead of being educated on uh, on the, on how this disease works, that's that's feminism helping men. Or my favorite article, my favorite argument of all of these was was this one. All of us should join hands and support Planned Parenthood because a handful of people who are helped by Planned Parenthood are trans men. Okay, men also get abortions, so by helping these, like, three dudes, feminism is helping all men. Ever. And that's a serious point that someone tried to make. So, more so than any of the three arguments that I've presented here, this one is the one that sounds most like buying your wife sexy lingerie for her birthday. It's, it's a gift for her, but really, it's more of a gift for you. Feminism claims to be helping men by doing things that they were going to do anyway to help people, some of whom are men, but these are men that feminists don't consider as real men. Because let's be honest here, for feminists, especially intersectional feminists, helping black men is a delusional attempt to somehow hurt white men. A viewpoint that only feminists and the American Nazi party share. Everyone else understands that this is not how that works. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's address some of the minor points, okay? Uh, number one, a woman invented the jockstrap. My counter-argument to that is, a woman is not feminism. Number two, Justice Ruth Ginsburg helped overturn two laws that discriminate against men. My argument to that is, uh, Justice Ruth Ginsburg is not feminism. And if you dig a little deeper, you realize that the first law she helped overturn, uh, she wasn't actually the lawyer, she was just advising a lawyer of the guy who was suing on behalf of the ACLU. And the second one was helped be overturned nearly 50 years ago. But even then, even so, uh, one woman is not feminism. And in spite of that, this Mike.com article that I mentioned uh, talks about her like five fucking times. They might as well shove their heads up her vagina. She's one person. She is not the goddess of feminism. She is not the representative of feminism, okay? Number three, okay? Number three. Let's talk about rape and domestic violence for a second, because that's such a fun topic. These two topics get brought up a lot in these articles, and it's a little sickening, and let me explain why. The first point that's always brought up is the work done by organizations like Male Survivor and Just Detention International. Now, let's start with the second one first. All the credit for their work is always given to a woman named Lovasia Stanau, I think that's how her name is pronounced, who did not form this organization and is only one of the people who helped run it. But she is constantly credited as the only name involved in this in any way because she's the first woman that shows up when you Google it. The fact that this organization was originally founded by actual male victims of prison rape is just brushed aside completely not mentioned at all. In fact, I don't even know if she's a feminist, because I haven't been able to find any quote of her saying she's a feminist. I mean, she probably is, but maybe they shouldn't just assume. Now, by contrast, the second organization I mentioned, Male Survivor, has nothing to do with feminism and is run by someone who openly stated that he is not a feminist. So still, feminists are very quick to take credit for helping solve this problem that they seemingly don't actually care about that much because they never do anything about it by taking the credit of entire organizations, some of which are distinctly not feminists. Then there's the claim that a feminist campaign helped change legal definitions of rape to include men. What they failed to mention is that this was not intentional. A campaign by Miss Magazine was created in an attempt to remove the word forced from the definition of rape so that it could also include women who were unconscious when they were sexually assaulted. But this had an unintended and possibly undesired effect of changing the definition completely into being any kind of unwanted penetration. And despite how much feminists care about male victims supposedly, they actively fight to keep this definition from being changed again in a way that would make it possible for women to be counted as perpetrators. Now when it comes to the issue of domestic violence, the situation is similar but perhaps even worse. I found that a number of these listicles cited advocating for male victims of domestic violence as a feminist achievement. 
but all of them had this point couched in a broader argument that the reason that male victims are suffering is because of masculinity that prevents them from going to the police about it. Basically blaming the victim. But what does feminism do for the men that do go to the police about it? L let's see what they do. Um, let's see what feminism has done for victims of male domestic abuse. Let's see. Um, they helped close the only men's domestic abuse shelter in Canada and drove the founder of it to suicide. They murdered the dog of the founder of the first ever domestic abuse shelter in the world because she was about to let men in. They disrupted a congresswoman in Ottawa who was speaking at a convention trying to help abused husbands. And they preferred to shut down multiple domestic abuse shelters in the UK rather than comply with a law that would have forced them to stop turning away men. And even online the situation isn't much better. because. For every article I found saying that feminism should fight for male victims as well, I found several implying that statistics about male victimhoods are all made up, saying that funding men's shelters is a waste of money, and the rest focused entirely on why men being victimized by women is caused exclusively by masculinity and nothing else, and they probably don't even happen that much anyway, and no one should care, and no one should uh, make any shelters, just don't do anything, it's all masculinity's fault, L let them keep being abused. No nothing can be done, nothing should be done, if they just act more like women, then they they'd stop ge getting beat up, they're, they're actually asking for it, they're definitely asking to get beat up, the bitches are asking for it, that's the argument. Okay. So that's basically the end. But what's the takeaway from all of this? Because I don't want you all to get the wrong idea from this video. Since the last thing I want is to draw the sort of audience that watches YouTube skeptics, okay? I don't like those guys and I don't want them to be my audience, but I'm still gonna make this video because that's what I feel like. So is my point that feminism is bad? No. Is my point that feminism doesn't do anything for men? Not exactly. because. It sort of does, but not very well and not intentionally. The real issue here is that the question being asked, how does feminism help men, is too broad. It's the wrong question. The right question to be asking is, when has feminism, as a movement, actively accomplished something for the sake of equality that would help men and was either not beneficial to them or actively harmful just because it's the right thing to do? And. The answer to that is, uh, never. Or at the very least, it's no one who says that has been able to show any convincing proof of it. So basically what I'm saying is, to the people who say that feminism helps men too, either stop saying it, find real proof, or actually do something. And which one you should choose really depends on why you're saying it in the first place. Because if you're doing it because you think it's true, then you need to check your facts. And if you're doing it because you're trying to get men to become feminists, then that's not gonna work either because any man that's gonna become a feminist is already a feminist and the rest of us aren't really buying it.